Hi guys, this is Heather with Whippable Creations and I'm back. We got the zippers in. I fixed the zipper from the last one. Matches up fine this time, so that's good. All right, <coughs> before we get too much further, I've got to put this little... <coughs> Excuse me. Goodness. I've got to put this uh, magnetic snap closure in. So when you're putting on a, a magnetic snap closure, you've got a thin piece and a, a thicker piece. You see that? You see the difference? The thin piece always goes on the outside flap, and the thick piece is the stable part. So that's going to go here. So I'm going to move this um, away for now, and we're just going to work on this one. Now, in this case, um, I marked the center right here for this little thing. In this case, I don't have to worry about a seam allowance because I've already done my top stitching. But if you were going to have a seam that you needed to put in before you... Um, put it to... Before you... Ugh, words are so hard... <laughs> before you assemble the piece you would want to make sure that you keep this at least an inch away because if it's your quarter inch seam is here pretend your feet your foot is going to run into this and you're going to have issues so always keep it about an inch away so I'm going to kind of like eyeball this no I'm not I want it to be perfect So I'm working upside down. Put that center dot right over, right above my line. That looks just about perfect. Okay. All right, now, next thing I need to do is take my seam ripper and I am going to reach in. I don't want to cut through. I don't want to. You could go all the way through if you wanted to, but I, I want the, the back side of this magnetic snap to be um, hidden. So now I'm going to take my seam ripper and I'm going to slice those slices just big enough to match the holes or match the lines that I drew through the fusible fleece and the fabric. And now I'm going to take the thick piece, thick bit, and I'm going to push it through those holes. And you want to make sure that when you do cut those little slices there, that you don't make them too big. Because if you make them too big, you'll have to start over. You can always cut too small. And then cut again. So here it is here. Now I'm going to take this little washer that we used to draw the lines with. I'm going to push those little tabs out. Those little forks. Perfect. And we've got one snap ready to go. So now I can center this on here. Cut off the extra. And this is all ready. But since we're doing that, um, let's go ahead and make the flap. So this is the top piece, and it is directional. So I have to make sure that when this back piece is sewn to the back of the bag 
and this comes over the top, it is the right direction. I don't want it to come around and look like that. That's the wrong direction. Well, in my estimation, it's the wrong direction. I like the way it looks this way. It's an aesthetic thing. So this is going to be the lining of the bag, or the flap. So I'm going to put them right sides together. And I want this flap to be rounded on the end. So... Oh. Sorry. Let's see. I'll have to edit that part out and see if I can get my phone back into the cradle without shutting off the video. Okay, back to the beginning here. I'm going to uh, right sides together, making the flap. And I'm just going to put a few pins in just to keep this thing together. And I've got fusible fleece on the back side of the exterior flap. The, the, the piece that is going to be showing is fleeced with fusible fleece. It's a polyester product. You, um, mine is a Pellon brand. But there are other brands out there. Okay, so now I gotta figure out which is my top. Okay, this is the top. So this is the piece I'm going to curve. So I'm just taking, I have a tin that I've got um, my clips in. And a cute little angel. For lack of a better place to put it. I didn't know where I wanted it to go yet. So it's just sitting there. So I am just going to... Draw me a circle. And I'm going to do this about a quarter of an inch away from the edges. Because I'm going to show you what I like to do. And I'm just going to trace this. There's that side. You see what I'm doing here? Okay, you can see what I'm doing. Quarter inch away, roughly. Very gently round that around so I don't break my th lid. That's good. Put that aside. And we are ready to sew. back over to the sewing machine Ooh, are we ready okay you see this quarter inch mark here I'm going to put my fabric right up against that I'm going to sew a quarter inch. My fabric's getting away from me. i got to pull that over there. You could pin. I don't like pinning. 
All right, now I said I drew that circle a quarter inch away from the edges. This is why. I'm going to trace that line. You do this because I hate cutting circles or half circles and then they don't match. So I'm just going to trace this line so right on it. Come down to the other end and do the same thing. Follow that line. Quarter inch. Take the pins out. Now I can cut this. See, are you going to see here? Okay. I'm going to peek my head around the camera. And I'm going to cut my seam allowance quite thin, about an eighth of an inch all the way around. That you could use pinking shears too, but I don't have any. So what that does is that gives me a nice, neat um, way to turn this when I'm ready to turn it. And it won't have a bunch of bulk in the at the seam. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now we'll turn this right side out. See how nice that is? I'm going to run my finger right along the seam here. You see that how I do that with my finger? If you have a bone turning tool or a bamboo, um, bamboo turner, That's what this is. You can do the same thing with that. Just pushes that seam out. It gives it almost like a finger pressing a crease. That's a nice curve, isn't it? Let me get the other side here. There. All nice and neat. Now this just needs a pressing, but my iron isn't on. This is it. Now we'll top stitch this. Not now, I'll do it later. I want to show you how you guys, I already showed you how to do top stitching. But I wanted to show you guys how to do the elasticized pocket. I already did the one. Just like this. There's the back of it. And now we're going to do the other one. So this has got fusible fleece. On the back, this is the outside piece of the pocket. Here's the back. I'm going to sew a quarter inch across the top.
I'm going to flip this over. Now I'm going to put a piece of elastic right here. And it's a big long piece of elastic. I don't need it to be the right size because that just makes it more awkward. But when this folds over, it's going to trap that right there. Okay? So let me sew that down. I'm just going to tack it uh, within a seam allowance. Come on, you. Oh, sorry. I gotta figure out a better way to hold this camera. So when I sew on a piece of elastic, I leave a little tab because it's easier to hold on to. So now I've got the elastic here and it's just like a whole yard. Got it? So now I'm going to fold this over. Making sure that that elastic is right up against that seam. And I'm going to put a pin just beyond it to hold it in place. Put that elastic right up against that seam. And pin it. Same thing. Now I'm going to top stitch a casing with the elastic already in there and it's about a 5 8 inch so I don't have to worry about it um, catching that elastic I don't want to I don't want to sew on the elastic at all I just want to create a casing for it seam at the top nice and neat and I'm sewing off okay now I've got this I caught it right there Oh, that's irritating. Let me... Uh, I can't find my seam ripper. I gotta come back, clear back here. See, this happens to everybody. Thought I had that pinned and I didn't. At least not pinned well enough. Where is my seam ripper? Let me see, make sure. Okay, this is the only spot I've got. You see that distance between where the I'm holding the that's why I didn't that's why I caught it in my seam because I didn't have it pushed up all the way to that seam allowance. I should have taken better care.
Okay. Get that pushed up all the way. That's, that should do it. Got my five inch. There we go. I'm feeling that my elastic is out of the way now. I cut this bag at six and a half inches. I don't know if you remember me telling you guys that or not. At the very beginning. If you've watched the video at the beginning, you'll know I cut this six and a half inches by seven and a half inches. And I'm not going to cut down. This needs to be four and a half inches. So, if I take my ruler here. Would start it at this end here. We'll come down here. Four and a half. So I'm going to hold this here and I'm going to cinch this up. I'm just going to pull my elastic until this reaches four and a half. Hold on to that tight. So we're almost there. Just need a little bit more. Four and a half. And we're almost just a little bit more. That should do it. Now we are going to I got this whole held on tight. Let me just check this, make sure. Yep, we're good. I'm gonna tack this down. Okay. Pocket's done. Tuck this down again. Tack it down, not tuck it down. It's all right. There we go. Perfect. All right. What shall we do next? Let's attach the side pocket to the gussets. That's not it. Here they are. I found them. All right. Remember how I, um, showed you I cut these um, little grooves out of my fusible fleece that's to reduce bulk when I go do some sewing at the top so if you've done that <coughs> make sure that you put those at the top so we're gonna put our pocket on the bottom just like this Now the bottom of the bag is bigger than the top of the bag. Pocket. 
the bottom of the pocket is bigger than the top of the pocket. So we're going to have to put a little pleat in the bottom. And that's okay. That's very easy to do. No measuring involved, which is um, always awesome. Put that right there. So, since I pinned that, it must be very important because I hate pinning. All right, so now I'm going to tack this down less within the within the seam allowance so you can see my quarter inch seams all the way out here. I'm going to just tack this down within the seam allowance. Because this is going to get sewn again and then that'll trap the seam within the seam allowance and nobody will even see it okay so now we've got to come up here another pin And we're going to pull this elastic over here. Get that right up against the edge. We've got a hole at the bottom and we've got a lot of fabric. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to find the center. Pin. Find the center of the pocket. Pin. Now I want to put a little pleat, so here's how I'm doing it. I'm going right to the center. Pinning on either side of that center pin. I can take that out and I'm going to fold this flat And we've got a little pleat in the bottom of our bag. So let's sew that down real quick. Again, I'm sewing within the seam allowance because this is going to um, get trapped inside another seam when we get ready to put the bottom on. Shift my fabric down. Stilettos are so useful for getting in where your fingers can't go because it's too tight.
Isn't that cute? Got a nice pocket. Put your bottle of water in there. Awesome! Now you'll just do that to the same thing to the other one. So I think that's all I wanted to accomplish today. I will see you in the next video. Be sure to like my Facebook page, Whippoorwill Creations, so that you can put your have your name put in the drawing on December 1st for this bag. And be sure to subscribe my YouTube channel so that you can, and then click on that little bell so that you can get notifications when I upload a new video. I am so excited this bag is coming together. Love it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.